the education center. Principles of crop production. Before any crops can be grown, the native vegetation has to be partly or wholly destroyed and seed beds or nurseries have to be established where the seeds are planted and grown until they can be transferred to the field. Nurseries are always located on fairly level, fertile land with a convenient supply of water all year round, as the young plants must be watered regularly. Sowing of seeds must be done at the proper time and season and the crops should be cultivated to control weeds, pests, and diseases. Prompt harvesting and good storage are also essential to save the bulk of the crop from pests and diseases. Types of Crops Arable crops, these are crops which are planted, cultivated, and harvested within a year. Most crops used to supply food for man come in this category. Also, a good proportion of the fibers and drugs processed by our industries are provided by arable crops. These crops can be classified according to the use to which they are put such as drug crops, e.g. pyrethrum, fiber crops, sisal, oil crops, ground nuts, sunflower, food crops, maize. Food crops can further be classified into legumes, e.g. beans, cereals or grains, maize, wheat, and root crops, cassava, permanent crops. These are planted and left on the same plot of land for many years. The land on which they are grown is tilled, but the crops can be harvested for a number of years. The economic life of permanent crops ranges between 3 YEARS, e.g. pineapple, and 3 0 YEARS or more, e.g. cashew, mangoes. Forage crops. These are primarily grown to provide food for farm animals. They include grasses or legumes which can be grown separately or as a mixture. Vegetable crops. These are usually annual grown under an intensive or gardening system as food for man. Fruit crops. These are usually permanent crops whose fruits can be eaten raw by man. They supply the bulk of the vitamins and minerals essential for healthy human growth. Crop rotation. Crop rotation means growing a series of different crops on the same piece of land in a certain sequence. Crops should be grown in a rotation, that is, in a regular order. Crops belonging to the same family are attacked by same diseases and pests and use similar nutrients. Therefore they should not follow each other in the same rotation. Rotating crops can break up the life cycles of pests. Soil nutrients also have time to be replaced. Rotations also help to improve soil structure and to keep a good level of humus in the soil. Seedbed Preparation A seedbed is a piece of land varying in size from a few square meters to hundreds and even thousands of hectares, that has been prepared in such a way that it is ready to receive the seed or planting material. The main reasons for preparing a seedbed are as follows. To kill the weeds either by burying them or by desiccation through exposure to the sun. To bury crop residues from the previous season's crop so as to make it easy to plant. By burying the trash, decomposition of animal and vegetable matter is speeded up resulting in the addition of organic matter into the soil as well as releasing of nutrients for use by the plants. Seedbed preparation loosens up the soil thereby facilitating rainfall infiltration into the soil as well as improving soil aeration. A well aerated soil promotes rapid growth as well as increasing final yields. Seedbed preparation may be aimed at breaking hard soil surface that may sometimes form as a result that rainfall acceptance of the soil is impeded. Seedbed preparation operations are sometimes directed at breaking the plow pan which may be impervious to wafer thereby limiting deep drainage. There are two main operations involved in seedbed preparation. Primary operations include such activities as initial clearing of the land by cutting down the bush or uprooting trees and tree stamps and initial plowing. Secondary operations follow the primary operations and include mainly harrowing. Methods of preparing seed beds may include Hand method Mechanical seed bed preparation Ox cultivation Plant propagation Plant propagation involves the formation and development of new individuals which are utilized in the establishment of new plantings. There are two main ways or methods of plant propagation. First, Propagation by seed, sometimes called the sexual method. 
The second is vegetative propagation or asexual method. Vegetative propagation. This method includes all methods of propagation other than seed propagation which do not depend on the formation of seed. It relies on the use of vegetative structures such as stems, leaves or roots to perpetuate the parent plants. The vegetative parts contain or develop buds which give rise to new individuals. Many flowering and ornamental crops and certain vegetables are propagated vegetative. Sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, and cassava are propagated vegetative. One main advantage of vegetative propagation is that plants produced result in plants which are an identical copy of the parent plant. Vegetative Propagation Vegetative propagation is used when the plants either does not produce seed or when although the seeds are produced, they are not viable or they do not breed true to type as is the case in outcrossed crop varieties. Meristem Tissue and Regeneration Vegetative propagation is made possible by meristem tissue that is commonly found within stems and leaves, as well as at the tips of roots and stems. Meristem tissue contains undifferentiated cells that actively divide by mitosis allowing plant growth. Specialized, permanent plant tissue systems also originate from meristem tissue. It is this ability of meristem tissue to continue to divide that allows for the regeneration that is needed for vegetative propagation to occur. Types of Vegetative Propagation Natural Vegetative Propagation Natural vegetative propagation involves the development of a new plant from parts of a single mature plant without human intervention. An important ability that is key to enabling vegetative propagation in plants is the ability to develop adventitious roots. These are roots that arise from plant structures other than the root, such as stems or leaves. Through the formation of adventitious roots, new plants may develop from extensions of the stems, roots, or leaves of a parent plant. Modified stems are most often the source of vegetative propagation in many plants. Vegetative plant structures that arise from plant stems include rhizomes, runners, bulbs, tubers, corms, and buds. Vegetative structures emanating from roots include buds and tubers. Plantlets are vegetative structures that emerge from plant leaves. Runners Fragaria, wild strawberry, with runners spreading out over soil. Bulbs Bulbs are round, swollen parts of a stem that are typically found underground. Within these organs of vegetative propagation lies the central shoot of a new plant. Bulbs consist of a bud that is surrounded by layers of fleshy, scale-like leaves. These leaves are a source of food storage and provide nourishment for the new plant. Examples of plants that develop from bulbs include onions, garlic, shallots, hyacinths, daffodils, lilies, and tulips. Tubers. Tubers are vegetative organs that may develop from stems or roots. Stem tubers arise from rhizomes or runners that become swollen from storing nutrients. The upper surface of the tuber produces the new plant shoot system, stems and leaves, while the bottom surface produces the root system. Potatoes and yams are examples of stem tubers. Root tubers originate from roots that have been modified to store nutrients. These roots become enlarged and may give rise to a new plant. Sweet potatoes and dahlias are examples of root tubers. Corms Corms are enlarged, bulb-like underground stems. These vegetative structures store nutrients in fleshy, solid stem tissue and are typically surrounded externally by papery scale-like leaves. Due to their external appearance, corms are commonly confused with bulbs. The major difference is that corms consist internally of solid tissue, while bulbs consist of layers of scale-like leaves. Corms produce adventitious roots and possess buds that develop into new plant shoots. Plants that develop from corms include crocus, gladiolus, and taro. Suckers Suckers or root sprouts are plant shoots that arise from buds on underground roots or stems. Suckers may also sprout from buds near the base of the parent plant and can grow into new plants. A number of shrubs and trees propagate through sucker production. Some examples include apple trees, cherry trees, banana trees, hazel shrubs, roses, raspberries, and gooseberries. Plantlets Plantlets are vegetative structures that develop on some plant leaves. These miniature, 
young plants arise from meristem tissue located along leaf margins. Upon maturity, plantlets develop roots and drop from leaves. They take root in the soil forming new plants. Plantlets An example of a plant that propagates in this manner is Kalanho or mother of thousand plant. Plantlets may also develop from the runners of certain plants such as spider plants. Artificial Vegetative Propagation Artificial vegetative propagation is a type of plant reproduction that is accomplished through artificial means involving human intervention. The most common types of artificial vegetative reproductive techniques involve cutting, layering, grafting, suckering, and tissue culture. These methods are employed by many farmers and horticulturists to produce healthier crops with more desirable qualities. Cuttings These are portions of plants which are cut and used for multiplying the plant. They may be stem, whole leaf, or piece of the root. Examples of plants which use cutting are sweet potatoes, cassava, and ornamentals such as bougainvillea and hibiscus. Layering this involves the induction of the plants to produce roots on their stems before these stems are severed from their parent plant to be used for producing new individuals. The plants are induced to produce roots when the stem part is buried in a medium which is kept moist. The wounding of the part of the stem which buried exposes the stem cambium which gives rise to roots. Further the wounding and slash or bending of the branch blocks downward movement of materials synthesized in the leaves. These accumulate in the part which is buried there by promoting rooting. Grafting and budding Grafting is the uniting of two separate, usually woody, structures. For example the union of a stem to a root or more commonly the union of two stems. The upper part is called the scion has usually one or more buds which give rise to the future fruiting plant. Budding is a rapid method which is confined to small branches of large or small plants. The diameter of stem being budded is usually 6 to 25 mm. Budding is particularly successful with tree crops e.g. citrus, avocado, and cashew. The bud or scion must be taken from a high-yielding tree of good quality, while the rootstock must be hardly and vigorous. After the bud has set and started to grow the part of the stalk above the bud must be cut off. Methods of Budding the commonest method of budding is tea budding which is widely used in the budding of citrus. The procedure in citrus involves the following. Incision of a T-shaped cut in the stem of the rootstock at a height of about 45 cm using a special, sharp knife. A well-developed vegetative bud from a desirable tree is then excised from the tree and inserted into the tea cut by first raising the flaps of the bark in the cut. The bud union is then carefully wrapped either with raffia or budding tape to prevent water entry as this would cause rotting. This tape is removed later after the bud has taken. After the bud has taken the part of the rootstock above the bud is half broken and then bent and later on removed completely by severing it off with a sharp knife. Under most wet environment, more rainfall, inverted tea budding is used in which case the bud is inserted into the cut from below. Suckers Suckers are special shoots produced by some plants, e.g. banana. These are divided from the parent plant and transplanted to grow naturally into a new plant. Thanks for your attention. Kindly like and share our videos. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell to be the first to receive the next learning video. You may also give us a comment to suggest what topic you would like us to cover. See you later.